Are we done? I hope so. I hope I didn't forget anything. Probably did. Oh well. Hello everyone. Today we'll be doing a video using the sort of new Norvina Volume 1 palette. Gorgeous, gorgeous thing that it is. Um, this was a very expensive palette, so I want to get as much use out of it as I can, and it is gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful. Um, I tend to go towards the pinks and the purples in this palette, so today I'm going to shove myself right out of my comfort zone and head right on into some of these absolutely gorgeous mustardy yellows. Um, these have numbers instead of names, so I will be telling you which numbers I'm using, but honestly, if you have some fall golden type colors at home, some mustardy yellows, those are perfectly fine. You can use whatever it is you have at home and get the same, you know, as close to this look as, as you can get. And it'll be gorgeous too. So, um, nobody has to run out and buy the palette because they like this look that I did in my eyes today. Although, as I said, I love this palette. It is gorgeous. And I really like Anastasia Beverly Hills formula as well. Their product performs very, very well. So, um, it's going to be a bit chatty because that's, I chat, I talk. I'm sitting here in front of a camera by myself, except for my cat, one of my cats. So I chat a lot. This would be really awkward if I just sat here in silence and just put my makeup on like some kind of robot. So I will be chatting it up, but hopefully the video won't end up being too long. If you're interested in my complexion makeup today, everything will be listed in the description box as always. Nothing that I used today on my face was new, just some of my very favorites that I've been enjoying. And if you haven't seen my um, current favorites video yet, it is live on my channel, so go back and watch that. Um, I had a lot of fun making that video, so I think you'll enjoy it. Also, if you're new here, I'm Christine. And welcome to my channel. I hope that you will stick around and subscribe and join our little family. And um, if you would like to be notified of when I do upload videos, then go ahead and click on that bell as well and you'll get notified anytime I upload something. Also go over and follow me on Instagram because I do makeup looks of the day over there. Um, and also I'm hopefully going to start doing some outfit of the day photos um, because I broke my full-length mirror so I'm in for what like 49 years of bad luck I don't know it was pretty big so I have to buy a new one and they're pricey why are mirrors so pricey I don't understand it's just a I don't get it it's like a hundred dollars hundred and fifty dollars for a mirror somebody help me out here where can I find one that is full length that will um, have its own stand because I don't really want to hang it on a wall I kind of want to lean it but I have pets and I don't want them knocking it over. So any suggestions would be awesome. I'm just having one of those kind of days today where I don't like my hair and I don't like my face and I don't like my outfit. <laughs> and just tell me I'm not the only one who has days like that, right? So um, I'm not gonna be a sad sack because nobody wants to sit and watch a sad sack for 40 minutes. So uh, I'm just gonna try and relax. This is what I do for relaxation. I love to play with makeup. It's kind of my therapy. Um, if a look doesn't turn out exactly the way I wanted it, so what? At the end of the day, it washes off. And um, it just feels really good to be creative. And um, I really like to get my fingers into the makeup. And it's a whole it's a whole relaxation, relaxation thing for me. So um, we'll go ahead and get started with our palette. Uh, I'm going to start with the one that is numbered E3, and it's kind of a, um, a browny, mustardy color. I don't think I've ever used this color before, maybe swatched it. I'm using a nice fluffy brush, and uh, Morphe M441, and I'm just going to start running that through the crease. I do have a mirror over here, uh, it's kind of off camera, so if I'm turning my head to the side, that's what I'm doing. I also have a monitor down here. Um, it's kind of small, I'm hoping to get room enough to put a full-size monitor so it's easy for me to easier for me to see um, but sometimes I do need to look in the mirror right away it's coming off with beautiful pigmentation I mean 
that's darn near the color that is in the pan and that's with one swipe on a nice fluffy, fluffy brush. Um, do I have any idea of what kind of a look I'm doing today? No, I don't. Kind of go with the flow as far as my makeup goes. Usually I will pick some kind of a, a, a color scheme or I'll have an idea in my head and I'll go from there. If you hear chiming, that is, those are my wind chimes. Um, I have my window open. There are chimes out on my balcony and I can't close it because I'm already wearing a sleeveless top and still hot. I don't think it's that hot today in Pennsylvania, but the very few flurries that we had the other day are already gone. There's, there's green grass again. I can't say that my feelings are hurt about that because about the only time I enjoy snow is when I can stay inside and be in front of the fireplace and just snuggle up and be warm. I don't really like driving in it. I don't like being out in it. I don't think I've spoken about this on my channel before, but I have what are probably several autoimmune diseases. We haven't really gotten a clear answer yet. One of them that is confirmed is called Raynaud syndrome, and it causes my hands to turn very, very white in the cold. And then as they start to warm up again, they will swell and turn bright, bright red. And it really, really is painful. So the cold is not good for me. I wear gloves and heavy coats and things way earlier than most people do outdoors. But when I'm in the house, um, I get hot very easily. So I often have the heat running downstairs for everyone else and a window cracked open for myself because I just get too warm. That might sound crazy, I guess, but I am in my 40s. I'm not saying it, but it could be that thing that I shall not name where you just get hot. Short bursts. Yes, yeah, it's a hot flash, okay? It's probably a hot flash. I do know that everybody else will be comfortable and I will be so wetting, so. I also just noticed eyebrow hair that I would like to pluck. And yes, I did just do this before we started. Somehow I missed that one. I'm gonna switch to a bit of a smaller brush. This one is the M456, and I'm going to go to the shade D1. It is a more bright mustardy yellow. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that on the end of the brush. And let's see how this goes. I'm going to try to put it in my crease below the shade that we just used, okay? Um, and sort of on the outer V of the eye. So, like so. Now, that one, right off the bat, first impression is not as pigmented as the other one. So I'm going to pick up more and kind of stamp this one. Instead of swiping, I'm going to stamp it. And it may be one of those pigments that needs a more dense brush, something maybe flatter to really get the overall yellow effect that I'm looking for. I'm not sure, but we're gonna stick with this for now. And these are both matte shades, beautiful matte shades. I can't say that I actually have, that's my dog, you've met her, if you've watched any of my other videos, Ruby. Um, she's a tiny little Yorkie Poo who thinks that she is a Rottweiler. So I think that means that my daughter's here. She has a little Chihuahua, his name is Rufus, and Rufus comes to visit with Grandma, that's me. Um, I don't have any grand human babies yet, but I have two grand fur babies, and if she's going somewhere and she knows she's going to be gone for a length of time, she'll bring him here, and he visits with us for a while, and we love having him. He's a sweetheart. He's no, no bother at all. Um, I'm sure I have pictures of Rufus on my Instagram. 
because I'm always showing pictures of my pets. I get confused sometimes whether I've talked about things on my channel or on my YouTube or on my Instagram, I'm sorry. We were able to bring home my baby Snoopy's ashes on Friday. So he's home. And that was very, very bittersweet. I won't talk about it too much because I'm not going to sit and cry on camera, but it was hard. One of the hardest things probably ever. All right, next. I think we're going to go ahead and put some um, shadows on the lower lash line before I add the uh, shimmer. There are so many gorgeous shimmers in this palette. How I'm going to choose one, I do not know. So I'm going back into E3, the more mustard brownie yellow on a Morphe R43. It's a nice flat little shader or smudgy brush. And I'm going to run that under the lower lash line. Connecting it to the shades that we already have going. Let me know in the comments. Do you have your Christmas lights up yet? Or your Christmas decorations? Or even your tree? Um, we got our indoor decorations out this weekend and I love it for me two months is not long enough to have all those decorations out and and just enjoy them um, we get a real tree so I couldn't put my tree up yet I, I've often debated because I so the tree is probably my favorite part but for me we've had artificial trees before and for me it's just not the same um, I know a lot of people get them and they absolutely love them. It's just not the same for me. It's not um, my favorite. And Christmas is only once a year, so I think I should have, you know, exactly what I want, even though I have to wait a bit longer. So usually the weekend after Thanksgiving is when we actually get the tree put up. Um, we, it's a whole thing. We go as a family to a tree farm a local tree farm in our area and we choose a tree sometimes they already have some cut and we can choose from those but we have had years where we've gone out into the um, out into their little tree farm and tagged our own tree and then actually had it cut right cut down right there so that was amazing um, I do remember one year when we were living out west we decided that we were going to buy a tree. Now I'm going to take that E3 shade and I'm going to run it along the um, lid and kind of use it as a bit of a, a liner. We'll see how this goes. I haven't done this with this shade before, but shadows can make really good liners. So we went and got a permit to cut our tree down out in one of the national, I think it was a national forest, in New Mexico. And we drove and we drove and we drove. I'm telling you, it was like the Griswolds trip to pick up their tree. We drove forever out into the middle of nowhere in a forest. And then we trudged with two little kids <laughs> through up to my knee, maybe even my my halfway up my thigh, it, snow, to try to find a tree, and we never did find a tree. We never found the tree. Everyone that we found, one side of it was completely bare, or they were too small, or way too big. Oh, what! But we'll never forget it. It was a family experience that honestly we will just never forget. It was that good. Um, so now we don't do that although I'm sure there are lots of places in Pennsylvania where you could cut down a Christmas tree uh, we just go to the tree farm where they're growing the trees and we don't have to trudge through you know a mile of snow to find a tree now this is the hardest part for me because there are so many gorgeous shimmers in this palette that I want to stick all over my face but 
I don't also have a tendency to get my lids looking way too busy. Um, there's one in here I really like and it is kind of a duochrome pink to gold shift. I think I'm going to use that one. I'm going to go in with my finger. It's just my favorite way to apply shimmers. If you've been watching me for a while, you know that. You can also use it on a dry brush if you want. You can use it on a wet brush. I've also seen people just use a wet finger. Put a little setting spray or water or whatever on their finger and then pick up the shadow and it seems to work really well for them. So that color is stunning. I am in love. This is E1. So it's the bottom row farthest left in this palette and it is beautiful. If you excuse me for one second, I'm gonna go ahead and close that window. The wind is really picking up. Ten seconds later. Sorry. Now my cat's gonna be angry, but it's really getting loud. Okay, so I really love that shade. That shade is gorgeous. I'm gonna deepen up the outer V here a little bit more. I'm gonna try taking kind of a shader brush and using our E3 the dark mustardy color and just see if we can pack that on to build up a little more drama in the outer V. Still not exactly the way I want it so I'm going to take a small brush the M456 and pick up a kind of a browny rusty terracotta terracotta color C5. Get a little bit of that on the brush it is a very deep color. Let's see how this looks. It's just going to warm up the crease a little bit, deepen it up, give it a little more definition, and hopefully pull the eye out a little bit, open it up a little wider. I don't have the biggest eyes ever, and I just think that that is a technique that seems to work out for my eye shape. the depth and the dimension that it'll add to the crease I think will really make a difference. I'll show you, compare the eyes, see which one you like better. I prefer the one that we deepened up. I think I stink at like explaining what colors look like. Okay so the eye that we've deepened up with the darker color and then without it. I prefer this one. I think it looks more interesting. I think it gives it more dimension. It's not so flat with the one color. Um, although the shimmer does have a really pretty um, shift to it, I think that the darker just brings your brings your focus out to the outer eye a little bit more. I try not to talk too much when I am blending because sometimes my editor slash slash husband That'll be a part where he can cut out if my videos are getting too lengthy. I do pause and give him some time to kind of fast forward. I know a lot of people were upset and had many, many feelings and opinions about Anastasia coming out with so many of these very large pretty pricey Norvina palettes all at once. I really don't have an opinion on it. I just know my budget and I know what I can afford and I couldn't afford to buy all three so close together. But I have faith that this is something that's going to be around for a little while and I really would like to pick up volume three. Um, it looks very interesting to me that I think out of the three, had I waited and had um, the choice of any one of the three, I may have gone to the third one. Although this is a stunning palette. I mean, I don't regret buying this one at all. So I will probably pick up volume three at some point for several reasons. And 
to be completely transparent. Uh, one of them is packaging. I fall for the packaging every single time. And the butterflies all over the front of that palette just really, really caught my eye. And also, um, I have a funny little story about butterflies. Um, right after my little Snoop passed away, I was outside sitting in the sunshine. Maybe I've already told this story. Uh, if I have, then editor, cut this part out. I can't remember if I did or not. If you're a new subscriber, you haven't heard it, so yeah, whatever. Um, I was sitting outside on our swing, uh, just kind of feeling sorry for myself, honestly. As you do, if you've ever lost a loved one, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I just needed some time alone, and I was out there sitting on the swing, and a butterfly came and landed on my toe. I had on sandals, and this butterfly landed on my toe. I was like, oh, isn't he pretty? And I watched him for a little bit and he didn't move. He stayed right there on my toe. And I picked up my foot and he still wouldn't leave. So my husband came out the door and he kind of slammed, you know, the door made a noise and the butterfly took off, but he stayed right around me and then came back and landed right back on my toe again. And I honestly believe that this is gonna sound kooky. So if you don't believe in these kinds of things, I'm probably gonna be embarrassed. But I think it was a sign from my Snoopy that he was okay and that, you know, I didn't need to be sad all the time, that he would still be around. And um, so now those butterflies, they just hold a special place in my heart. I always thought they were beautiful and, you know, coming from a caterpillar and cocooning and opening up to be this beautiful butterfly. I always thought that was really interesting and fascinating. Nature is fascinating but now they just hold a, a, a special place in my heart. I'm gonna take some of the same shimmer that we used on the lid, E1, and I'm just gonna put a tiny bit on the inner portion of my eye. Just a tiny bit. And kind of run it into that darker color. So we have a nice blend of the two. And yes, of course, I'm gonna stick a bunch of it in my eye because it wouldn't be, you know, finished. If I didn't stick a bunch of eyeshadow right directly in my eyeball. Goodness me. Alright, now that I'm blinded for life, um, I really like the way the eyes have turned out. I'm going to put a very um, short line. I'm sorry, short line. Yes, very short. Just a little teeny weeny line on the end. No, I'm going to do a very thin line of liquid eyeliner and then uh, we'll do the waterline. So today for my liquid eyeliner, I'm gonna use a product by Revolution. It is their Renaissance Flick eyeliner. It, is, it has beautiful packaging. I'm a sucker for anything rose gold too. You know it. If it's rose gold, nine times out of 10, I'm gonna buy it even if I don't need it. Rose gold is gorgeous. So, nice thin line. Can't talk while I'm doing this. But we can fast forward if, if we need be. Much, much, much later. The more I fuss with it, the bigger it gets. So I'm just gonna stop there. Let it dry a little bit. Okay, the liner that I chose for my waterline is by Melt Cosmetic is Cosmetics. It is one of their all-day, everyday eyeliners. And the shade is in baked. It's a really pretty kind of mustardy yellow. It looks very matte. I think it looks good with this eye look. We shall see. I actually think I might take one that's a bit darker, more like the outer corner shade, and use that to deepen up that outer corner a bit. So two shades on the waterline. This one is called Lamia, and it's by Melt as well. So I'm just going to put this one in the outer corner. It's a beautiful shade. I'd probably use that one nearly every day if I could. Alright, so 
Eyes are looking good. Um, I'm going to go off camera for a few minutes. I'm going to line my, uh, I'm going to tight line and put on some mascara and I'll be right back. We'll do the lips. 11 minutes later. Okay, we're back and I applied a uh, liner to my tight line and also used some brown mascara. Today's was from Believe Beauty and it is in the shade brown. I've been enjoying this uh, mascara. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but at under $5, it is a really decent mascara. And I needed a brown one, and in a pinch, you can find these at Dollar General, hopefully right up the street from you. So, um, we're going to do our lip colors. So for the liner, I'll be using a Rimmel Lasting Finish Liner in the shade Spice. It's kind of a nudie pink. For Lippy today, I'll be using a one of my favorite liquid lip formulas, actually, and it's very affordable. This is by Wet n Wild that you can find in Walmart, I think Rite Aids, um, CVS. Uh, it's a drugstore brand, and it's called their Mega Last Liquid Cat Suit. And this is one of their metallic versions. If you don't like metallic lipsticks, obviously you're gonna hate this. But I think it's really pretty, and it's called Queen's Blood. And their packaging is super cute. It's got like flames on the top and it's all rose gold and clear packaging. The doe foots are really nice. They dry down to a nice finish. and they have a really good uh, staying power. So, that is Wet n Wild's Liquid Cat Suit in Queen's Blood. And um, today for a setting spray, I think I'll use the All Nighter Cherry. It's one of my favorite setting sprays. This actually does help your, your makeup to last longer, and I like the cherry scent in it. So, a couple squirts of that. And use my handy fan. This is quite possibly one of the best purchases I ever made. It just speeds up that drying process so that you're not patting it or removing any of your makeup. There we go. So I think that does it for me today. That is the final look using the ABH Norvina Volume 1 palette. Um, so far, I've used this palette probably three or four times since I got it, and I've loved every look that I created out of it. It has such a nice wide range. You can do a very colorful look, you can do an everyday look, you can do a very fall look. So um, I hands down believe that it is a very versatile, very useful palette. I'm just not sure that you need the other two if you've already purchased this one. I think that's... I think that's pretty much where I stand on it. Will I probably still get volume three? Yeah, yeah, I'm not proud of it, but yeah, I, I probably will because it's stunning and gorgeous and I just wanna use it all over my face. That's all I want, okay? I just wanna play with my makeup. I don't ask for much, that's all. I don't wanna be judged. Let's not bring it up again, thank you. All right, folks, that does it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That would be super, super awesome. And also, join me again. Join me here. Join me over on Instagram. That would be awesome, too. And um, I'm trying very, very hard to push over what seems to be like this 625 mark on Instagram. It's like plateaued there, and I'm not sure how to get it moving again. So if anybody that watches this could share it and tell people that I'm, I'm super funny and not the best makeup artist in the world but hey she makes me laugh right that's something thank you again I hope you're all happy and healthy wherever you might be today and um, have a beautiful rest of your Sunday 
it's Sunday here. We'll see if I get this one up that quick, but thank you so much for joining me. Bye-bye.